In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is asked a question. What is the great commandment? Uh, the commandments, uh, typically we're familiar with the Ten Commandments, but actually there were 613 commandments given under the Mosaic Law, uh, dealing with all aspects of their uh, religious life and also civil life, their daily life in society. And so this is a big question. Of all of these laws, what is the great commandment? What's, what's numero uno, that kind of thing? And Jesus answers uh, and says, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. Uh, he said, This is the first and foremost or great commandment. And he said, The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Or you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, on these two hang all of the law and the prophets. And so this is a pretty succinct answer. There's a, uh, there's a thing called reductionism. This is where when we take large concepts and we reduce them down to uh, sort of manageable size, where we take concepts that are maybe really, really large to understand and, and we distill them down into a, uh, you know, maybe something uh, much shorter, something maybe a little more manageable. Uh, there is a danger in that though. Uh, reductionism uh, oftentimes removes all of the important nuance, or at least much of the important nuance, to some of the ideas that are being reduced. And so it, it can be helpful in some ways, but it can also um, ultimately rob a, um, a concept, an idea, or a passage for that matter, of, um, of so much of the poignancy that should be taken from it, uh, or that build it uh, into what it is. And so uh, I say all that because Jesus is not in fact practicing a reductionism that removes important nuance, but rather is quite profoundly uh, bringing to its simplest form what it means uh, to honor the Lord and to live out that which he would ask of us or have of us. Uh, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind with all of your heart, with all of your motivations, intentions, that which is the deepest part of who you are. Uh, love him from that deepest place. In other words, uh, completely, totally, with, with intention and passion. With all of your soul, with all that you are as a person, um, you know, your personality given over to him. Loving him uh, with everything that you are, and of course, all of your mind. Uh, I'm fond of the fact that Jesus mentions this because, uh, and of course he's sum, sum, summarizing, you know, what we see in the Old Covenant as well, it's, but, but when he says mind, I love that he does that because, uh, you know, the, the intellect is a gift from God. It can be used in ways that, you know, are decidedly, you know, wrong and lead us away from him, but the intellect is actually given as a means through which we might love him and know him. Uh, and, and maybe just to know him and therefore love him. And so uh, to love with all of our mind means that our mental capacities, our faculties, our pursuits, our uh, seeking of truth, all of the things that our mind might be engaged in, all of these things ultimately can be uh, put into the service of knowing and loving God. And so he says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the, na the next uh, one that he says follows naturally. How can you, in fact, love God with all of your heart, soul, and mind uh, if it doesn't find expression in the way that you treat your neighbor? And he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, this is also an important one, and one that sometimes is misunderstood. Uh, there are those who, for a long time, uh, there has for a long time been uh, an approach to this passage uh, that goes something like this. Well, I need to learn to love myself so that I can love others the way Jesus wanted me to. And I think it's important that we understand that's not what Jesus was saying. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, the same way that you love yourself, love your neighbor. <clears throat> and we all basically love ourselves. Uh, you know, we all take care of ourselves the best we can. Yeah, generally, unless there's something wrong with us, you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. But even there, I would say, um, just to borrow from uh, something that was once said, I mean, if we, if we think we hate ourselves, uh, for whatever reason, that's probably not true. We actually love ourselves enough to wish that it were not true of us. And so, you know, it's, it's natural for us to have this sort of sense of self and that kind of thing and, and to love ourselves in that way. 
Jesus is not saying we need to learn to love ourselves. He's assuming that since we already do, we know how we should therefore then love our neighbor. We should love our neighbor the same way that we love ourselves. And so to love God with all that we are and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves in these two things, find really find uh, in its simplest form an explanation of what all of the law has to say. Um, you'll notice here that while the law certainly does give prescription for certain holy living and how to perform uh, proper sacrifices, how to live in society, like, like in our society we have laws, and in Israel they did as well as prescribed by God. But it is fascinating to me that the pursuit of the asker, the questioner, the interlocutor, was that he wanted to know which commandment was the greatest of all of the commandments. Um, you know, how, what ordinance do I follow? What is it? Matter of fact, uh, in another episode, a lawyer asks him a similar question, and Jesus puts it back on him. Well, what does the law say? And, and the questioner basically quotes what Jesus just said. And, uh, and Jesus goes on to say, well, good, that's, that's right, you do these two things. And so, but in both of these instances, it was not so much about a codified law, the way we would typically think of the law, but rather that which starts anchored in the idea of loving God with all of our heart, soul, and stand mind, and our neighbor is ourself. Love is the supreme commandment. Love the way God defines it, not love in sort of the weird, syrupy, hallmark way, or love in the really distorted way that much in society, uh, the main society, are trying to redefine it as, but love that is Christ-centered, giving, sacrificial, uh, based in truth, all of these kinds of things, but it's based on love. The greatest commandment, and really the two that Jesus boiled it down to, are rooted in the idea of love. Loving God first and foremost with all that we are, and then letting that love find expression as we love our neighbors ourselves. Uh, there is a lot to be said um, about what the Christian church could look like in terms of its relationship with each other. Jesus said the world would know your, that we're his disciples by our love for one another. Um, and there's also a tremendous amount to be said about the testimony that we could bring to the world uh, through our love for our neighbor. As a matter of fact, uh, in that other episode where the lawyer asked Jesus about it. He said, well, who's my neighbor? And Jesus goes on to tell the story of the Good Samaritan and the idea of, of this person who is our absolute abject enemy is what's in view in that story. Uh, Jesus says in that parable, essentially, that we are to love even our enemies as we love ourselves. Our neighbor is whoever is around you. And of course, that's a big challenge to love, isn't it? But that's why love, when expressed as Jesus commands, is something that is so powerful. Uh, it doesn't mean that we condone sin. It doesn't mean that we just turn our uh, heads away from what God says is right and wrong and these kinds of things. But we love people the same way that he loves us. We treat them with the same respect and mercy that we're thankful that God has shown us. Um, much could be said about love. Of course, you know, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, uh, gives us most succinct and beautiful definition of what love is and what love does. And so, at the heart of the great commandment is not about, okay, what rules do I follow to make sure I'm right with God? The gospel itself, obviously, is not based on that. The gospel is based on God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And therefore, our love for him and our love for one another, rooted in that kind of love, ultimately satisfies what God desires for man to do and to be. So it's a simple concept, it's a simple passage, um, not always that simple to follow through on and to live out. I mean, it, uh, to demonstrate that kind of love, um, you know, like John would say in his first epistle, you know, we love because he first loved us. We, we know what love is at all, and we know how to practice it first because he loved us. And so he demonstrates what that is, and to live up to that can be very challenging, can be very difficult. Um, but it is the command, it is, and it is ultimately the satisfaction of what God would have of us. And so, uh, there it is. There it is. There, there's our marching orders in a nutshell. Uh, if we could say that anything Jesus said would fit in a nutshell. But um, definitely something to chew on, something to think about, something to 
humble ourselves before the Lord and to say, Lord, this is an area that I really struggle with. You know, I'm driving here while I'm doing this. And uh, thankfully, nobody cut me off on the way here. You might have, you know, I might have had to start over because I may not have demonstrated love to the person in front of me. But the truth of the matter is, is that this simple concept of loving God with all of our heart, soul, and strength, and my mind, um, and loving our neighbors ourselves, this sums up what God would have of us in terms of our relation with Him. If we love Him, we're not going to disobey. If we love Him, we're going to walk with Him. If we love Him, we're going to want to please Him and honor Him with our lives and this kind of thing. Again, not forsaking the gospel. If we fail, it's not like we lose our salvation or something. But our lives will reflect that love in the same way that we love our spouse, our children, our friends. We treat them a certain way because we love them. This is what it looks like when you love God. And when you then project that love to your neighbor, this is fulfilling the law. Wow, that's pretty amazing when you think about it. And uh, it was just something on my mind and heart this morning as I was spending some time devotionally. And uh, so not a really long post or anything today, just something to think about, maybe something to encourage you with to uh, spend time meditating on as you come before the Lord in your own uh, quiet time in that. So praise the Lord. But Father, we thank you for the love that you have demonstrated toward us in Christ. We thank you for the mercy, the grace, the forgiveness that you have given us because of Christ and through Christ, I should say. And so thank you for showing us that and, let, and lavishing that upon us. We thank you that you have given us such a tremendous demonstration for our own benefit also, though, for your glory, we pray that we would live out uh, lives that reflect that love. And Father, that's a tall order for us. That's not something we can always naturally do. And so we need your help with this. And we would ask you to teach us and help us to understand how we can love our neighbors. We love ourselves and help us to anchor that first and foremost in our love for you, which is really just us giving back to you that which you've already shown us. So thank you, Father. We love you and praise you for this. And we ask you to help us in this in Jesus name.